So, I realize my limitations, but honestly, having being in a phase of not really being inspired to say a whole lot, I thought it was dangerous to try to cook something up. <laughs> and I realized that Jesus had actually preached and spoken and talked. And I thought, you know, that's, I guess they say that when you're supposed to write a song or something, you write what you know. And that's why nobody likes to listen to it. But I'm just going to read Jesus' words to the church today. I hope that uh, the presenter is not too much of a hindrance to you. I will prime the pump a little bit in the sense of you know, some of the hard things we've been dealing with here is we've had a rash of people we love deeply who've found new truth that's rather old sin, frankly. But that's, that's rattled me pretty deeply that we're still susceptible to that. And we're going through revelations with uh, Glenn. And apparently... One of the first things that people do with Revelation is try to get their timeline out. And Glenn already kind of acknowledged that a lot of you did that with him. But one of the things I'm struck with in Revelations is just the, is Jesus, frankly. Mm -hmm. And I, we were already talking about that here this morning with John, who had been with Jesus. He'd been with Jesus through his earthly ministry. Uh, tried to worship angels. I mean, he was so overwhelmed with what he was seeing and how he was seeing it at that point in his life that he kind of got a little... got it wrong a little bit, I guess, and <laughs> was so overcome that he tried to worship angels and had to be told not to. And I know we're not going to get that same awe for Jesus in heaven and heavenly things out of the words off the page, but it's there. You know, Jesus is definitely spoken of, mentioned, talked about. And so personally, I'm struggling a little bit with our kind of new knowledge generation and, and our debate and discuss format of church and things like that. I'm, I'm personally just kind of struggling with that. And I'm really simplifying my desire to trust Jesus. Um, the Pharisees believed in Jesus, but they didn't really agree with him. They wanted to kill him, or at least a lot of them did. I'm asking myself at this point in my life, do I agree with Jesus? None of us would walk in here and say we don't believe in him. So I'll give you that one. I'll give you the answer to that question. But do you agree with him? So let's see some of the things that he said. Matthew chapter 5, we'll start there. I'll read it to you as best I can. If it's too annoying, put the earbud in and read it this afternoon to yourself. And when he saw the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and opening his mouth, he began to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when men cast insults at you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how will it be made salty again? It is good for nothing anymore except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under the peck measure, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments and so teaches others shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court, and whoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever shall say, You fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. If therefore you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your offering there before the altar and go to your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way, in order that your opponent may not deliver you to the judge, and the judge to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Truly I say to you, you shall not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks on a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out, throw it from you. For it is better for you that one of the parts of your body perish than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off, throw it from you. For it is better for you that one of the parts of your body perish than for your whole body to go into hell. And it was said, whoever divorces his wife let him give her a certificate of dismissal. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the cause of unchastity, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again you have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil. Yeah. <clears throat> 
you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist him who is evil, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. And whoever shall force you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you in order that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax gatherers do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect as your Father is perfect. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. When therefore you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, and they may be honored by men. Truly I say to you, you have your reward in full. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And when you pray, you are not to be as the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners in order to be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. <coughs> and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. And whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance in order to be seen fasting by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not be seen fasting by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <coughs> the 
The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. For this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life as to what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body as to what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? And why are you anxious about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. But if God so arrays the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more do so for you? O oh, men of little faith, do not be anxious in saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge lest you be judged, for in the way that you judge you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. <coughs> Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it shall be opened. Or what man is there among you when his son shall ask him for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he shall ask for a fish, will he not give him a snake? He will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Therefore, however, you want people to treat you, so treat them, for this is the law of the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter by it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, and few are those who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, 
nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the man descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and burst against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded upon the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and burst against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So this is where we pause and inject our opinions of what Jesus just said. And to keep in the theme of the day of being very odd and awkward and different, I'm not going to do that. We're going to read more words that Jesus said to more people. Um, if you're not offended at this point, you wish to go further, I would encourage you to read the four Gospels with the bias of um, what did Jesus say to who? <laughs> Concentrate on when he engaged people. You know, what did he say to them? Uh, it really reveals his heart. And then you can maybe take a second step and say, what did they do with it? You know, because some of them were uh, just like just like human nature. I mean, some of us are deeply passionately in love, and then sometimes it turns and and you become deeply passionately in hate. And um, and people. But people fell into both camps, I think it's fair to say, uh, with, with Jesus' words. Anyway, we're going to stick in Matthew, and I'm just going to jump around a little bit more. We'll jump up to chapter 13, and I'm just going to simply again read what Jesus had to say, primarily. Um, on that day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea. And the great multitudes gathered to him. So they got into a boat, sat down, and the whole multitude was standing on the beach. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying... So this is where Jesus picks up. Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. And others fell upon the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And others fell away among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. But the others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. And his disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has... To him shall more be given, and he shall have an abundance. 
But whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken from him. Therefore I speak to you in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You shall keep on hearing, but will not understand. And you will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull, and their ears, and with their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because you see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what has been sown in his heart. This is the one whom the seed was sown beside the road, and the one on whom the seed was sown on the rocky places. This is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporarily, and when affliction and persecution arises because of the word, immediately falls away. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word, and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becomes fruit, unfruitful. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, indeed bears fruit, and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares also among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprang up and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. And the slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the slaves said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you are gathering up the tares, you may root up the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up. Then gather the wheat into my barn. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. This is the smaller than all other seeds, but when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in the three pecks of meal till it was all leaven. Um, all these things Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables, and he did not speak to them without a parable, so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the multitudes, went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares in the field. So here we have the answer. And he answered and said, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. 
the very words that we're, of whom we're speaking today. The one who, come, who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. And as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Therefore, just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. In that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid. And from joy over it he goes and sells all that he has, and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach, and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age, and the angels shall come forth and take out the wicked from among the righteous, and will cast them into the fiery furnace. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We'll stop there in 13. He asked them if they understood that. We could contemplate that ourselves, I guess. Let's go to chapter 18. See what the Lord had to say. <clears throat> At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, who were then... Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Sorry about that. So they asked him who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Religion never stops, does it? <laughs> if you've been around people, it comes up, no matter what you do. And he called the child to himself and set him before them, and said, Now the words of Jesus. Truly I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it is better for him that a heavy millstone be hung around his neck and that he be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of its stumbling blocks, for it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to that man through whom the stumbling block comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off, throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the eternal fire. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out, throw it from you. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than having two eyes and be cast into the fiery hell. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven continually behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If 
any man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountainside and go and search for the one that is straying? If it turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the, more than the ninety-nine which have not gone astray. Thus it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that any one of these little ones perish. But if your brother sins, go and reproof him in private. And if he listens to you, you've won your brother. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every fact may be confirmed. And if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax gatherer. Truly I say to you, whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I did not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a certain king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, there was brought to him one who owed him ten thousand talents. <coughs> but since he did not have the means to repay his lord, his repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had in repayment to be made. The slave, therefore, falling down, prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell down and began to entreat him, saying, Have patience with me and I will repay you. He was unwilling, however, but went through him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you entreated me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave, even as I had mercy on you? And his Lord, moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. So shall my heavenly Father also do to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Um, let's go into Matthew 19 a little bit. How about down in like verse 16 here? And behold, one came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? And he said to him, Why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which ones? 
And Jesus said, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept, what am I still lacking? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be complete, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you shall have treasures in heaven. Come, follow me. But when the young man heard this statement, he went away grieved, for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were very astonished and said, Then who can be saved? And looking upon them, Jesus said to them, With men... This is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. And what then will there be for us? And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, that you have followed me, in this generation when the Son of Man will sit. Whoops. Truly I say to you that you have followed me. In the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel and everyone who has left Houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake shall receive many times as much and shall inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Um, we're going to keep going into 20 here. <clears throat> for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to those he said, you too go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. And again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did the same thing. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You too go into the vineyard. And when e evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last group to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each one received a denarius. And when those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more, and they also received each one a denarius. And they received it, they grumbled at the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the scorching heat of the day. But he answered and said to one of them, Friend, am I doing you no wrong? Did you not agree with me for Daenerys? So take what is yours and go your way, but I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is my own? Or is your eye envious? Be 
because I am generous. Thus the last shall be first, and the first last. We'll wrap up here quickly, I think. We, maybe we'll read a little out of 21. Uh, perhaps starting in verse 23-ish. When he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? So Jesus answered and said to them, I will ask you one thing too, which if you tell me, I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was from what source? From heaven or from men? They began reasoning among themselves, if we say from heaven, he'll say to us, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude, for they all hold John to be a prophet. And answering Jesus, they said, we don't know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in the vineyard. And he answered and said, I will, sir. And he did not go. And he came to the second and said the same thing. But he answered and said, I will not go. Yet he afterward regretted it, and went. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The latter. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you that the tax gatherers and harlots will get into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax gatherers and harlots did believe him. And you, seeing this, did not even feel remorse afterwards so as to believe him. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and rented it out to the wine, vine growers and went on a journey. And when the harvest time approached, he sent his slaves to the vine growers to receive his produce. And the vine growers took the slave and beat one killed another, stoned a third, and again he sent another group of slaves larger than the first, and they did the same thing to them. But afterward he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine growers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. And they took him and threw him in the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to the vine growers? They said to him, He will bring those wretches to a wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to another vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at the proper seasons. Jesus said to them, Did you never read the scripture? The stone which the builder rejected this became the chief cornerstone. This came about from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation producing the fruit of it. And he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will scatter him like dust. I would like to close by just reading John 3.16 to us.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deed should be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifested as having been wrought in God. We'll end there today. Um, I fear it may digress if I tried to fill more time and I, I just hope that, you know, in, a, in an awkward Sunday like this where our norms are not uh, available to us, that we uh, maybe focus on Jesus. Uh, I've been really moved. I, I'm struggling a little bit. My world's changing, neighborhood's changing, church changes. Been here a long time. I have some Sundays I look out here and go, what, where did Jesus Community Church go? And you guys are welcome. I don't mean to make you feel unwelcome, but it's just different. And uh, sometimes we don't know how to handle that. But, uh, yeah, I think of uh, and I'm, I'm struggling for my place here a little bit because it's just not the same. But I think of what the church in Ukraine is going through. You know, and, and as a deacon, um, you wouldn't be dealing with a lot of drama and, and doing favors for your buddies and stuff like that. You'd be risking your life to do what the Bible describes as the role of a deacon. <laughs> Making sure people have food and water and you know, and so our life got upended this week out of just our conveniences and stuff. But man, there are people out there that uh, things are coming apart for them. And uh, we will just see more, probably. So I am in a position of just really trying to. See if I have this pure childlike love of Jesus or not. I don't know how many meetings a week you need to attend to be sincere. I don't know what your odometer readings need to be. You know, we have an Americanized churchianity thing, uh, expectations and so forth. But I just lay this out here for you today. These were the words of Jesus. It was my voice, unfortunately. Sorry for that. But uh, think about it. You know, if you're offended, I would probably stop and figure out why. Uh, if your heart skips a beat every time your betrothed speaks, then hopefully the music and stuff will be missed, but you still got something out of, out of today.